Hello and welcome to what I hope to be the last episode on the engine glow up for Granny Grumman. As you can see here, we still got some oil leaks, so I'm going to bite the bullet and replace the head gasket. I've already removed quite a few parts off camera in the interest of saving time, but here goes the valve cover. I'll begin by removing the rocker arms and the push rods, and then carefully laying them out in the order that they were removed from the engine. Next, I'll free up the bolts retaining the head. Once all the head bolts are completely loosened, I can take them and put them aside again in the order that they were removed from the engine. Using a rag and gently tapping with a hammer allows me to break the head free just enough so I can use my hands to wiggle it free and then lift this cast iron behemoth of a head out of this engine bay. Considering the fact that this 292 is over 48 years old, this engine is in surprisingly good condition. Since I already have the head out, I'm going to do a quick shade tree valve job. I'll begin by using a socket and a hammer to loosen the keepers. Now that the keepers are broken free, I can carefully use this valve spring compressor to reveal them, then slowly and carefully remove them. Once the keepers are out of the way, I can release the valve spring compressor, then remove the valve spring and the valve spring retainer. Once I chip away the old valve guide seal, I can finally drop the valve out of the bottom of the head. Again, not bad for 48 years old. And here's the entire process again from start to finish. These valve guide seals are supposed to be a soft rubber, so I'm very glad that I'm replacing them. The next step is going to be removing all the oil and carbon deposits from the valves. I'll be using brake cleaner, a Scotch-Brite pad, a drill, and some very fine steel wool to finish it off. Now that all the valves are set to go, I'll begin cleaning the mating surface of the head, again using a Scotch-Brite pad and brake cleaner. The next step is to lap the valves to ensure they have a nice tight seal. After thoroughly cleaning any grinding compound left over, I can finally begin assembling the head. Once the valve is seated, I can install the valve spring, the valve spring retainer, use a valve spring compressor, and then I can install the valve guide seal and the keepers again. Once the valve spring compressor is released, we can use a socket and tap on the valve spring retainer again to make sure the keepers are set. And now with the head all set, it's time to focus my attention on the engine block. The next step is to clean up the surface that mates to the head, so I'll put some rags in the cylinder so I don't get too much debris in there. Again, using a Scotch-Brite pad and brake cleaner, I'll remove any residue left by the old head gasket. And on goes a brand new Felpro head gasket. The factory service manual says you need to put sealant on the threads of the head bolt, so I'm putting it on the threads in the block ahead of time. Then slowly and carefully, I'll walk the head into the engine bay and install it on the engine block. Once I've determined that the head is seated, I'll begin applying sealant to the threads of the head bolts and installing them in the engine, just finger tight. Using a specific pattern found in the factory service manual, I'll begin tightening the head bolts by hand. Using the pattern found in the factory service manual, I'll begin torquing down the head bolts in three stages, eventually ending up at 95 pound-feet. Next up, I'll clean up the push rods and rockers.
Next, I'll install the push rods in the exact order they were removed in, as well as the rocker arms. I applied copper exhaust sealant because I noticed an exhaust leak where the intake manifold mates the exhaust manifold. I put it on everything just to be sure because I definitely don't want to do this again. And on goes the carburetor. The next step is to adjust the valves. To do this, I need to get the engine turned over until it's at top dead center on cylinder one, firing. Here I'm slowly turning over the engine with the starter so that I can get the rotor pointing at this bolt, meaning cylinder one firing, and then the harmonic balancer can be at zero degrees, AKA top dead center. Using this guide found in the factory service manual, I'll begin adjusting the valves, then turn the engine over, then adjust the other six valves. I'll begin by tightening this nut that retains the rocker arm. Then, I'll take the push rod in my thumb and pointer finger and wiggle it side to side until I feel slight resistance. Once I do, I'll turn the wrench one full rotation. And once I've completed that valve, I mark it off the list and move on to the next ones. There's a lot going on here that I'm not explaining, but if you want a very in-depth and detailed video on how to adjust the valves on these 292s, the Jayhawker has a wonderful video that I'll put in the upper right hand corner. Now that the valves are all adjusted, I can put the valve cover back on and try firing her off. The brake booster line slipped loose, causing a vacuum leak in a hard start condition. Now that the engine's all wrapped up, I can finally move on to other tasks. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe to my Instagram and TikTok, and I'll see you next time on the conversion of Granny Grooman.